morning, everyone. This is uh, uh, Tim Brown, and I am blessed uh, to have with me today uh, cousin uh, Chris Fields. Uh, Chris is a, a young man I've known since I uh, actually married into the family, and Chris is one of those who was always there for uh, all of the uh, family members, and particularly uh, the, the younger generation. And I, I would watch Chris and observe how he kind of took everyone under his wing, you know, and anything that they needed. He was kind of the go-to cousin. You know, every family has that go-to person. Uh, and Chris, Chris has always been that. So today, Chris, I want to talk a little bit about how important uh, we talked earlier about how important that family foundation is, and just that, uh, how how that has to be part of, uh, and it's always been part of the field's uh, tradition as well. But how important is that family foundation and, and sharing that with with the younger generation and passing that on to them? Yeah, Tim, thanks for this opportunity. Um, as you stated, family foundation is is very important. Um, Obviously, that's your first teacher, you know, watching and observing uh, people in your household. And then as you learn and watch, observe your cousins and people that you interact with, uh, it's vitally important as you grow. Unfortunately, in today's society, you know, sometimes they don't have a strong family foundation and they look for other options as a foundation. And that's why gang members are mm. developing um, because become a foundation for certain people mm. because they can identify with you know their their situation with that mm. gang what kind of kept you from uh, uh as far as you look back over your over your growing up and you look back over your family uh that family foundation as we talk about what kind of kept you uh away from those type of things, away from those type of influences? Uh, my older cousins, right. my brothers, yeah. I mean, you know, they, they were a huge influence. Mm -hmm. You know, they were always into sports. They were also, also into making sure that uh, the name mm -hmm. was important. Yes. You know, our last name fields, it was sort of recognized because of the uh, construction work that, mm -hmm. um, your grandfather, when, when you married in, William Arthur Fields, um, he was a construction worker. And then also our Uncle Vernon was in landscaping. Mm. And then Uncle Robert was into uh, Fields Enterprise. Mm. And so the name was just important as looking at what was being done also in the athletic world. Mm. So just gave me an opportunity not to um, you know, scar that name right. because people would recognize you. Uh, a lot of times you'd be across town or in town and somebody said, aren't you a Fields? Mm. And because of that, I wanted to make sure that I didn't create any blemishes on that name. Right. And I think that as a Christian, Tim, you can identify with the fact that there's certain things that you do and stay away from mm. because you don't want to blemish crisis name. Yeah, that's good. How, how are you uh, today? Now now you're at that role now. You said you, you were influenced by your brothers and older cousins. Now you're kind of that guy now. You're kind of in that role. So how, how do you uh, uh, keep the name and share that on to the younger generation? You know, I, I try to reach out and engage, make sure that they understand that, you know, there's a, a legacy mm. that we have. Good work. And you know, the, the legacy, you know, always you look at athletes like Michael Jordan and they're always talking about his legacy and Magic Johnson, you know, the number of championships that mm. they won. Well, our legacy is not with championships, but it's with the fact that we were able to sustain and survive, you know, through certain challenges. You know, as I mentioned, our family dynamics, they started way back when, and they were mm. able to overcome many of the uh, economic issues. They were over, able to overcome many of the racial issues, but yet still they were strong and they survived. Mm. Excellent, excellent. Good word, uh, that legacy and, and being able to pass that on. Uh, two part question. One is, uh, uh, how, give me a, a life lesson that you remember uh, that sticks in your mind right now, maybe an experience from, from, from your brother from growing up, you know, that kind of reminded you of who you are as a field. Well, uh, 
this goes back to uh, my cousins Keith and Rodney. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, you know, I was going to Champion and they were going to East. And, you know, they, they said, uh, hey, Chris, you know, it's one thing that you got to remember. You are fields and so you can't give up. You know, because mm -hmm. I was talking about, um, I'm tired, I don't want to play, you know, I'll try out next year. And because I was being overlooked. Right, right. And they said, well, you know, if you quit, it's going to be easier to quit the next time. Mm -hmm. And then, so I went home and I told my mom I was going to quit. And she said, well, you can quit if you want, but quitters never win mm -hmm. and winners never quit. Hmm. So I got it from both my cousins <laughs> and my mother. And so I went on to continue to play and had a very good year that year. Good, and good. so uh, because of that foundation and, and people in my ear, um, I, I think as a result, I was able to, you know, have some success both in athletic world as well as academic world. Mm -hmm. As, as we see the times that we're in now and, and from a young person's perspective, seeing all the things that are going on, what word of encouragement would you give to them to, to, to keep on going? You know, because we kind of look at some things that are going as if it may be a, a hopeless situation, you know, uh, the future is not maybe not as bright as they would think it would be being out of school, remote learning remotely, uh, seniors not having a graduation, uh, college starting uh, a little differently now. What, what word of hope would you give to them for, from your experience? I would say, Tim, that one thing that they should look at is the fact that what's happening right now does not define their destiny. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, they have some challenges. You know, they're learning remotely. Um, but take advantage of learning remotely and, and use that as an opportunity. In addition, you know, everyone doesn't grow up with both a mother and a father, mm -hmm. you know. And don't use that as an excuse mm. why you can't be successful. You know, there's a lot of history that we have that people have overcome. You know, for example, Frederick Douglass, you know, and I can go on and on of naming people that have overcome challenging situations and have been successful. You know, you can go back and look at some of the star athletes that only grew up with one parent. You can go back and look at a person like Benjamin Banneker that didn't have any parents that were able to guide him. And he laid out the foundation of Washington, D.C., a mathematician. So don't use any excuse that might happen right now as a reason why you can't be successful in the future. Yeah, I think that's a good word. And you, you talk about knowing our history that we, we've been here before. And I share that with young people. We've been here before. And... Uh, my word for them now is that this too shall pass. That's right. On the past, I was, but you have to be prepared. You know, like you can't waste this time. This is a great time to learn this technology because it is the way of the future. You know, it's, it, it, it already is here now and it's going to continue on. But, and those who, who master it or who really take advantage of those who are going to be successful uh, doing uh, as we continue on in, in life. You know, Tim, what uh, strikes me is the fact that as you pointed out, the, this technology is here and it's going to be here to stay. So learning the way we're learning virtual is going to be here to stay as well. You know, it's not going to be the traditional school uh, going in from eight in the morning to three o'clock. You know, you know, once people come back to some type of normalization, there's still going to be some type of virtual learning. You know, whether you're in the classroom and you're going to be taught from somebody in San Francisco, mm -hmm. you know, they're going to be sharing, you know, their information about, you know, Silicon Valley. Those are things that they're still going to happen once you come back into the school system. So, you know, like you said, make sure that they understand that this is an opportunity to take advantage you know, people are getting computers. Mm. Some people would never have gotten a computer right. in the past. So mm. take advantage of this opportunity and, you know, use it to your advantage. Mm -hmm. 
What, what role do we play as an African-American man in, in mentoring this next generation? And, and, and what are some of your thoughts on how, maybe how we do that during these times? Well, I think we still engage. Mm -hmm. And um, I think the one thing that we often don't do is share our story. Mm -hmm. You know, Tim, you have a great story. You know, there's others in the family that have great stories, but we don't share it. We're reluctant to share our story because we feel that maybe someone's already heard it, or maybe it's not that important, or maybe they need to hear from an expert. Mm -hmm. But I, I think what we need to do as family members and just as black men in general, just share our story because we all have different stories you know, we're just like a quilt, mm. you know, one patch and then the next patch and then the next patch. You know, we're not a blanket, we're a quilt. And we should start to link that quilt together because it's a, a dynamic story once we put it all together. Mm. That's good. That's good. And that quilt, you continue to add to it. That's right. And that's, and that's what that's what this is all about, uh, just adding to it, add, adding their story to the story, you know? Yeah, I mean, you know, when you look at quilts, you know, there's some big patches and there's smaller patches, but at the end of the day, it all keeps you warm. Right. And so, you know, don't be shy to share your story. If it's a small story, it could be an important story that someone else needed to hear. Oh, that's rich. Uh, and I knew this would be a, a, a great conversation with you. And you've always dropped some gems, you know, and I remember watching you with that camera, you know, how you, <laughs> how you capture everything of everybody, you know, and, and it, it didn't matter who, you know, and I think the, the thing about what, what I appreciate about you and you always have that kind of family member who makes everyone feel important. It didn't, it didn't, ima it didn't matter, you know, who they were, you know, what their background was or whatnot, or what they're into, what, what they're doing or not doing, they were just felt important. Uh, and, and you have a way of, uh, have always had a way of doing that. And I appreciate that about you, uh, just, just encouraging people. So I said to say this, just end this, give me a good encouraging word for someone, for someone who's watching this. Uh, well, <clears throat> I, I would say watch your thoughts because they become your words. Watch your words, they become action. Watch your actions, they become habits. Watch your habits, they become character. And watch your character, it becomes your destiny. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, you know, whatever you do in life, you know, don't use an excuse of what your background is. Always set your sight on your future. You know, I, I've heard the story and I think you've heard it too, Tim, you know, shoot for the stars, mm -hmm. you know, because you, you might land on the moon. So you didn't land on the star, but you landed on the moon. At least your elevation was higher than it was before. So I would suggest that people to continue to look forward and uh, don't ever stop dreaming. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I, I heard a minister say, <clears throat> When a person stops dreaming, they stop living. Mm. And so I don't care how old you are, you should continue to dream. Yeah, that's good work. Thanks, Chris. Well, I appreciate your time. And that's some, some powerful words uh, uh, that we can live by. And that's what, that's what life is, that we can live by. And uh, I pray for you and your family. And I pray you continue to encourage, continue to encourage people, which is what you always do and always have done. So thanks for your time. I appreciate it. Thanks, Tim. Have a blessed day mark in life but you know tim when you look at our family and you look at other families you know every dynamic in family is different you know i go to my wife's family reunions and you know everyone plays a role and just like our family reunion everyone plays a role and we gotta make sure that we uh encourage those that might not feel like that that their their story is important Thank you.